This question came from a viewer who wanted to know how to resize a word table after pasting data from Excel, particularly when the table is too wide for the page in the Word document. So to demonstrate this, I've got a basic Excel workbook set up with a few different worksheets, and we'll build up to copying the table from each sheet into a single Word document, making sure that each table fits the width of the page. I'll stick a link in the video description so that you can download this file. And I've already saved it as a macro-enabled workbook, so to get started we'll head into the Developer tab, open up the Visual Basic Editor, insert a new module into the project, and then create a quick subroutine called Copy Tables to Word. When writing the code, it's helpful to have a reference to the Word Object Library so that we get some help from the IntelliSense. So let's head up to the Tools menu and choose References. And then when the list appears, we can scroll down to find the Microsoft Word Object Library. Just go with whichever version you currently have installed. In my case, that's the Word 16 Object Library, so I'll just place a check in the box next to that, and then click OK to reference that library. Now I can declare a few variables which use classes defined in that library. I'll start with a reference to the Word applications, I'll say dim wd as word.application. I'm also going to declare a variable to hold a reference to the document that we'll create, so I'll say dim doc as word.document, and then finally I'll want a variable that references the table object, so I'll say dim tbl as word.table. Next I can create a new instance of word by saying set wd equals new word.application. And I'd like to be able to see what's going on as we start copying and pasting data, so I'm going to make the word application visible by saying wd.visible equals true. Having done that, I'd then like to create a new document and capture a reference to that document in my doc variable. So I'll say set doc equals wd.documents.add. I'm then going to reference the range of cells on one of the worksheets that I want to copy from. So I'm just going to reference the sheet one object using its code name. So I'll say sheet one dot range a one dot current region, which references the entire table that range a one belongs to dot copy. Then inside the word documents, I can reference the selection in the word application. So I can say wd dot selection dot paste. And then let's just have a quick look at what that returns. If we run the subroutine at this point, we should end up with a new Word application opening up eventually with a new document and the table gets pasted in with the problem described by the viewer in the question where the table spills off the edge of the page. I've closed down Word and returned to the Visual Basic Editor in Excel. And the next thing I'd like to do is capture a reference to the table we've just created in the TBL variable that we declared earlier. We don't really need a table variable to modify the table column widths, but I find it more convenient to go this way. So I'm going to say set tbl equals, and then I can reference the document object with the doc variable and refer to the tables collection in there. And then as this must be the first and only table belonging to this document at this point, I can reference it using index number one. What I can then do is modify properties of the table by saying tbl dot, then I'm going to reference the columns property and then apply the auto fit method to that. The auto fit method in Word is very similar to the auto fit method that you may have used in Excel to automatically change the column widths. Having done that, let's run the subroutine again. And this time we should see when the document appears that we have a table which now does sit within the region of the page in between the margins on the page. Um, and the columns have all been changed proportionally according to the size of the columns as they were copied from the Excel worksheet. So we've copied from sheet one, which was the Y 2011 sheet. So you can see that the title column in the worksheet was wider than the other columns. And so is the case in the word table as well. If we want all the columns in the table to have the same width, we can achieve that fairly easily as well. Let's head down to the end of the subroutine and add a new line. This time it will be tbl.columns.distribute width. So the auto fit method will make sure the table fits within the margins on the page, and then distribute width will make sure all the columns are the same size. If we run the subroutine again, that should be exactly what we see. If we don't want the table to fill the full width of the page, we'll need a different technique other than auto fit. So let's comment that line out for the time being. And I'm going to replace that with a couple of lines which change properties of the table object. So I'm going to say tbl.preferredWidthType. 
and then I can choose to set the width of the table either as a percentage or as a specific value in points. I'm going to choose width percent for this example and then on the next line I can say tbl.preferred width and then set that to be a numeric value which in this case will represent the uh, percentage of the width of the page. So I'm just going to go for 100 for this example and that's going to replicate what we've already done using the auto fit method. So if I run this subroutine now the document that appears will basically look exactly the same as the one in which we use the auto fit method. The advantage of this technique, of course, is that we can set a width of less than 100%. Let's halve it, let's go down to 50. And then when we run the subroutine, you may be surprised the first time you do this that the width you've entered here isn't actually honored. So you can still see the table is occupying the full width of the page between the margins. There's two things causing this problem. If I go back to the Visual Basic Editor, to solve the first problem, I can say tbl.allowautofit equals false. And then I'm just going to comment out the distribute width method as well, just to demonstrate that when I run this, we'll end up with a table which does occupy half the width of the page with the proportionally sized columns. So the title column is wider than the others. If I head back to the Visual Basic Editor and bring back the distribute width property or method, I should say, when I run this subroutine this time, the end result is a table which now spills off the edge of the page again. So if I want to make all the columns the same width and have the table occupy only half the width of the page, I just need to change the order in which I'm doing things. So I'm going to take the distribute width method. I'm going to cut that from that line. And then after disabling the auto fit property, I'm going to paste in the distribute width method. And then when I run this subroutine again, the final table should honor all the values I've specified. So all the columns are the same width and the entire table occupies only half the width of the page. Next, I'd just like to repeat this section of code for each worksheet in the workbook. I'll start by just resetting the preferred width to 100 so that we have some hope of reading what's in the table once it's been pasted. And then to loop through the collection of worksheets, I'm going to declare a variable called WS as worksheet. Then before I start copying things, I'm going to say for each WS in this workbook.worksheets, highlight all the lines of code below it and hit the tab key to indent all that code one space. And then at the bottom of that list, say next WS. Now, of course, I don't want to copy the same table of data from sheet one each time. So I'm going to replace sheet one with the variable name, which holds a reference to the worksheet that's being looked at that time through the loop. I've got to do something similar for the table that I'm referencing. So of course, the first table is always indexed as number one, but each subsequent table will have the next index number in the sequence. We've got a couple of ways of working out which table we've just pasted in or which uh, table we've just created. One simple way to do it is to refer to the count property of the tables collection in the document. So I can say doc.tables.count and that will calculate how many tables currently exist in the document and then refer to that one in that variable. Okay, so having done that, we can run the subroutine. The end results won't be perfect yet, but when it has finished looping, if we check back at Excel, we'll see each table from each worksheet has been pasted in in a single continuous list from top to bottom. Next, I'd like to make sure that each table appears on a separate page. And to do that, I can insert a page break. So inside the loop, just after I've finished changing the column widths, I'm going to say wd.selection.insertbreak. And then the type of break I'm going to insert is going to be a WD page break. So having done that, if I run the subroutine again, we'll end up with a new document with multiple pages in it and each table from each worksheet should now appear on its own separate page. So where we can see. Now, one additional minor problem, I suppose, is right at the very end, I've inserted a page break after the last table as well. So to get rid of that page break, what I can do is send a couple of pay, uh, backspace uh, characters. If I press backspace twice, that will remove the new line and the page break. And I can do that in code as well. If I go back to the Visual Basic Editor, after I finish looping, I can say wd.selection.type backspace. And if I simply copy that line 
and pasted in immediately below, it will send those two backspace key presses to the document. So running the subroutine one last time, we should end up with a new document with one page per worksheet, the table pasted in on each page, no extra page break at the bottom of the document, and each table filling the width of the page between the margins. So there we go, there's a few different techniques for changing the column widths of a word table after pasting it from Excel. Hopefully that's enough to answer the original question. Please do feel free to keep on asking and I'll do my best to keep up with the answers. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.